What's up, baseball players? Coach Dan Blewett here. It is uh, New Year's Eve 2019, and I wanted to share some things that I believe should be New Year's resolutions for you. So if you're not sure what uh, you want to change about yourself in 2020, uh, what things you want to improve on, or maybe you do, I want you to just listen in to a couple of my things I think should be on your list from my years of experience as a ball player and as a coach and, and knowing what players go through uh, because you have a lot of things on your plate, both your training, your schoolwork, your relationships with your teammates, your peers, uh, your parents, your coaches. There's tons of stuff that will influence your baseball career. So today I'm just going to give you a couple little pieces of advice that I think will help you in the long run that you can start doing this year. So number one, my number one New Year's resolution for you uh, is that you should find some coach you trust and ask to sit down with them and have them give you an appraisal of your ability. Ask them to evaluate you and be really honest about it. Because if you want to be as good as you can be one day, knowing who you are today and where you're starting is really important. And lots of times, even with coaches like myself, who I believe I'm like pretty hands-on and pretty honest and I like giving people evaluations, um, we don't always have time to seek you out to give you our, our evaluation of you. So be proactive, find someone that you trust and ask, can I have 15 minutes of your time? Can we sit down and talk about stuff that I need to get better at? Um, and please really be honest with me. Number two, do not compare yourself, or I, I should say, stop comparing yourself as much to other people you see on social media. So Instagram is hard on a lot of people. It's coming out of the woodworks that Instagram makes people feel sad and depressed and like that their life isn't as shiny and glamorous as it could be because everyone seems to post their best self on Instagram, right? Like I'm not gonna post like some grotesque selfie of me when I'm like, when I've got the flu on Instagram. Everyone posts, you know, the when they're at the beach looking beautiful, when they're hitting a bomb, they don't show when they're striking out. They don't show when they're struggling. So when you compare yourself to people on Instagram, and this is athletes too, it's gonna be just a recipe for despair because there's always someone better than you. Even if you're a really talented 13 year old, 15 year old, 17 year old, there's some kid out there that's four inches taller than you, that throws 10 miles per hour harder than you, or just drops bombs and is so much faster. That's just the way the world is. And you need to run your own race and compare yourself to you. Do the best you can, create a training plan, work hard every day, but don't get wrapped up in what other people are doing because they might just be physically more developed than you. You might be waiting on your growth spurt. And so comparing yourself to what some other kid can do who's like a full grown man at age 16 or 17, that's not fair to you either. So in this next year, spend a lot less time worrying about what other people are doing whether that means you log into Instagram less or Facebook less or whatever, um, just try to take some stock in yourself, run your own race and stop comparing yourself to those you see on social media. Number three, eat, eat more food. Me and my business partner, Lucas Cook, and when we were in uh, Warbird Academy for nine years, we were just constantly imploring kids, we wanted to shake them, go home and eat more food. And like, I eat a lot, I eat a lot. If you're 135 pounds, which is probably a lot of you watching this video, or if you're the parent of a 135 pound kid, they need to be 165, 175 pounds before college recruiters are gonna be really interested in them. Then when they can see like, oh, this kid's developed, I can see him potentially playing for my program. So eating needs to become like a job. It really is hard work sometimes to just keep shoveling food down your face but it's really, really important. If you're putting in the work in the weight room and you're still not as big and strong as you need to be, make eating your job. Ask mom and dad to get you a second plate every meal, pack more food, plan ahead, take extra protein shakes, extra chocolate milk, extra peanut butter and jellies, but eat like it's your job. Eat like it's gonna get you paid. In 2020, everyone is still, they're hunting the same things. You're competing for the same college roster spots as kids in Iowa and California and Texas and Nebraska and Maine and Michigan, everywhere. Everyone's competing for the same college roster spots. And so you need to treat every aspect of it as much as you can, like it's gonna get you there. And eating could mean the difference between five or 10 pounds. That could mean the difference between two or three miles per hour or 15 more feet of, of you know carry on that, that double that becomes a home run, whatever it is. 
So being big and fast and strong and physical is extremely important. If you go watch a college baseball game, those guys are big and strong in a way that high school players rarely are. So make sure you're eating and giving yourself the good nutrition to get the best gains that you can out of the weight room. A lot of you are working really hard in the weight room, I know, but you've got to eat even harder than you lift. Number four, find players that are comparable to you and study them. Watch more baseball, watch more college baseball. If you're a, a, a middle school player, go watch high school varsity games this spring. Go watch JV games, go watch more baseball, see what players do. That's one of the things that every major leaguer that you idolize, they've been doing that for years. They've been picking the brains of their buddies. They were picking the brains of veterans when they were rookies. They were out just asking questions and trying to figure out, what does that guy do that I don't do? Or he's my size, like I'm, I'm small, he's small. What does he do to get so much playing time? Go watch more baseball this next year. I know you probably play a lot of it, but make time to go watch more baseball because you're gonna see a lot of players that you could be very similar to when you're their age. And it's gonna be a really eye-opening experience when you say, wow, I need to like bulk up or man, look how fast he is. Like I need to work more on my sprinting. I get in the weight room more, whatever it is. It's gonna be an eye-opening experience. It's always valuable to see other people doing what you wanna do. So in 2020, go watch more baseball and compare yourself to those guys and see what they do and what you do and try to find things that you could control to get yourself in that same sort of shape in that same situation one day. Okay, the next thing, and this should be a resolution every year for the rest of your career, is talk a little bit less. That means talk a little less trash about your teammates, about your competitors, whatever it is. Just talk a little bit less. And also talk less about your own ability. So I think everyone as they age, whether it's boxing or football or baseball or basketball, golf, soccer, tennis, everyone, athletes have to have this swagger, right? And that confidence. But a lot of times we use it to cover up our insecurities. When we're afraid that we might not make a team or we're afraid that someone else is outperforming us, we tend to start to tear our teammates down. We talk behind their backs. We, uh, we inflate ourselves. We talk a lot. And I did this as a freshman in, in, in high school. I, I remember getting ridiculed by varsity players because I was talking about how hard I threw as a freshman. I saying that I was throwing in the low 80s when I really probably wasn't. Um, and that always stuck with me. Don't talk about it. Be about it. Do it. So this next year, just make it a resolution to talk a little bit less. Don't talk trash about other people. Don't be that guy always rattling and, and running your mouth in the dugout. Like be a respectful competitor. You can talk to your teammates, but you don't need to talk trash to the other team. And you also shouldn't talk trash about your peers or your teammates. And you also shouldn't inflate yourself. Be confident, be arrogant about your ability, but also be humble and be professional. Being humble doesn't so much mean not being confident, like I was humble in public. Like I would, if I played well, I would talk about how well my teammates did behind me. That's what being humble is. Humble is not saying, oh, I, I don't know if I could do that. I couldn't make that team. Like that's, that's not the way humble should be. You should inside be extremely like, just like oozing confidence. But at the same time, you don't need to be talking about yourself. You don't need to be talking about your own abilities. Just prove it on the field. It always works better always works better when you just go out and prove it rather than talking about it. So in 2020, definitely talk a little bit less, whether that's trash about other people or whether that's boasting about your own abilities. Just go out there and prove it, be respectful of other people, and be professional. My last resolution for baseball players here in 2020 is read more. One of the things that's available to you is other people's experiences. In, I guess it was like three years ago, I started reading a lot more. And I felt kind of arrogant where I was like, I was like, I wrote a book in 2013, I wrote a second book last year. And I kind of felt like I didn't want to read other people's books because they were like in competition with me. Like, and that was such a, a stupid thing to think. But I sort of felt like, I don't know, I wanted to be the only one people's, you know, people were reading my book. Um, and then over time, I started to realize there's a lot of stuff I didn't know on the internet, whether it was marketing, whether there's all these different things. There were just like things that I needed to learn about. Entrepreneurship, business things, financial things. 
And then I started to read things that I just didn't know about that were kind of completely outside of baseball. I was like, oh, this is awesome. This guy, this girl, they gave me their life experiences in finance and investing and entrepreneurship and just their memoir, their own life experiences, whatever it is. People are giving you their life experiences through writing. And there's obviously novels, there's tons of different stuff, but I read a lot of memoirs. I read a lot of like leadership books and books about things I'm trying to be good at. And it's been just the most valuable thing that I do, like as far as continuing development. So there's lots of young players watching this video today. You're watching me because you're trying to learn from me, which I appreciate. Uh, but there's so many people bigger than me. My experiences are great and I hope they're valuable to you, but there's so many other people that I've learned from that they've learned from. There's so many books out there. And so whether you're a reader, uh, I think really, reading's really great for your brain, but also there is Audible, there is other audiobook channels, so you can listen to a, an audiobook while you're on the bus. You can listen to an audiobook while you're sitting at home doing your homework. You can read if you're a reader. Me personally, I do mostly audiobooks. It's an easy way for me to like get the same content as reading with my eyeballs, um, but it's just so valuable. When you, when you think really hard about it, imagine some of the best coaches you've ever had. Coaches that have just like changed your life, they gave you so much wisdom, they encouraged you, you learned from watching what they do, they, they just taught you so much that they would picked up over the years. That's what reading someone's memoir is. They're just giving you all this information, stuff they've learned already. So don't discount that and just leave it on the table. Pick up a couple books this year, even if it's slow, just start making reading a habit and you're gonna see the world in a new way. You're gonna have new experiences from other people that you can draw on like, oh, if I'm in this situation, I just read you know, Michael Jordan's memoir, Le LeBron James' me memoir, and he had a really rough time this, you know, these couple years, and when he was a rookie, you know, he went through this, and maybe I can use some of that. There's so much wisdom out there that you can use, and people have already written it down, they've given it to you on, the, on Audible, on their books, also on YouTube, and all these interviews and podcasts, so find some way to read a little more this next year, it's gonna come back to benefit you in the long run. It's just, again, it's like having more coaches give you their experience, okay? So hopefully this video is helpful. Um, I'm not a big resolutions person, but I am a big make yourself better in the long term person. So I'm personally trying to improve a bunch of my own habits. It's not really related to January 1st. This is just like a good inflection point, but I'm personally trying to make changes so I have a better year next year and that I can accomplish more stuff and I can move faster towards my own goals. So make sure you're doing the same thing and hopefully these tips that I know have helped me personally, they've helped other kids that I've worked with personally, they've helped other of my peers and teammates and coaches personally. These are all things that I think can help you no matter who you are watching this video um, because I hope that if you've been watching me in 2019 that my videos have made an impact on you and hopefully you can continue to learn and also impact other people in 2020. All right, thanks for watching and have a great new year.